Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I was really skeptical if anyone was going to come considering what Dree said in his keynote. So uh, just to recap, here's a short video of what happened. Right now I'm really intrigued in Ember. Uh, uh, so, so just to plug my talk, I'll, I'll do a marketing 101 for React. So this is a, a, a small comparison of Ember and React. So React came out relatively later uh, compared to Ember. But uh, as you can see, uh, people have shown a significantly larger amount of interest in uh, React compared to Ember. Also, uh, as uh, as uh, time progresses, we have seen that uh, people are really interested in React compared to other frameworks. Uh, but like everything, you have to like take all the numbers with a grain of salt, and uh, you can't just rely on these uh, stars and folks. <laughs> so, so hello, Dublin. Uh, I hope you are having a fantastic uh, DrupalCon. Uh, we are. So I'd like to thank everyone who has made this uh, amazing event possible. And I'd like to thank the sponsor who keep on uh, pro uh, progressing DrupalCon every year. Uh, I'd also like to thank the selection committee for uh, allowing another, yet another, how to build a headless Drupal website session. I guess we can't have enough of those. So a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Basam Ismail, and I work as a senior front-end developer for Acquia. Uh, you can find me online under the uh, handle skip note. Uh, it's, it's almost everywhere, Twitter, GitHub, anywhere else. And I blog at basam.co. Uh, prior to this, I was working at Accelerant, where I got to work on a, a large decoupled re uh, Drupal website with a React front-end. It's, it's legacy.com. So you can check it out. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, great to see you all here. I'm sure you're all excited as we are. Amalia Khan, I work for Accelerant as a friend and developer, and um, I work remotely from Kashmir. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Alia Khan. Uh, we are also leading uh, Drupal uh, Kashmir communities and open source Srinagar communities uh, in Srinagar, uh, Kashmir. Uh, since last four weeks. Hmm. So, as they say, it's not about what you'll do, it's about who, who you'll meet and what you'll do together. So I'm really glad that we're all here to justify this quote. Just a show of hands, you know, who, is, who here is a front-end developer? Great. Who is a back-end developer? Cool. And uh, who has worked with React? Oh, awesome, wonderful. Since uh, we are the only session between lunch and you, uh, so we'll try to keep it short and sweet. Let's get started. We'll start by understanding uh, why would you expose data through Drupal. Next, we'll see what React is and how is it useful for building large-scale applications. Post that, we'll briefly go to Redux and uh, see how it is useful for managing uh, our application state. And finally, we'll look into how, to, how React applications can uh, be connected to Drupal as a, a Drupal as a data source. Exposing Drupal. So yeah, the question is, why would you expose data through Drupal? One of the reasons uh, could be you know, building rich user interfaces. Examples like some of these applications handling really uh, complex UI uh, client-side frameworks. Building these such complex uh, applications, there are you know, the interaction, and th that has a lot, lot of moving, part on, moving parts on the front end where requirements you know, are beyond trivial problems like toggling UI uh, or sending off AJAX requests, etc. And things start, uh, start falling apart. 
so one of the reason is that you know building complex uh, complex uh, uis another reason could be uh, internet of things uh, we all know that internet is a uh, center of everything today and every day millions and millions of devices get connected to it so uh, we try to connect everything we can get our hands on uh, important uh, thing here is to note that uh, some of these devices don't even have uh, browsers and some of these devices even don't have screens as well so uh, we don't, we are not even sure what next revolutionary uh, internet device would be there and but we are sure that uh, you know uh, if it if it will have an internet and even if it doesn't have an inter internet browser in it <coughs> lastly the next obvious reason is developer experience uh, there are uh, extensive conversations going on uh, decoupling drupal in drupal community these days and uh, decoupling uh, decoupling drupal let developers fully control their applications and achieve you know great user interfaces and here you are good to celebrate the freedom between a uh, front end and back end uh, develop back end different teams in your project uh, different teams in your project now you know front end is not dependent on back end and back end is no no more dependent on front end so they can you know f take a uh, full advantage and full expertise of their own domains and also uh, if we talk about uh, debugging or you know we can have we can greatly achieve time travel debugger or hot hot code loading in uh, in these uh, frameworks right now so, yeah so all right uh, so coming coming to react uh, as we all know react is the new shiny thing right now it's the fad but uh, it's not for just just not for no reason Uh, so uh, you might see like uh, several large corporates are using these uh, React on the, uh, for building client-side applications. These are client-side applications that are mission critical and that serve billions of users. So as you can see, Facebook, uh, Facebook that uh, created uh, React is using all, it's building all of, all of its uh, uh, web applications and even uh, mobile applications using React Native. Uh, and similarly, all these other companies are using uh, React as their client-side frameworks. But uh, apart from building web applications, uh, React is also being used for building native applications, like uh, it's used for uh, building the UI for the Atom Editor. It's, it's, it's used for the UI of the terminal uh, called Hyperterm. It's used by Nihilus for building their email client. And similarly, for uh, used by data scientists for building a tool for themselves. So uh, React is being used uh, in several different places other than your browser. It's even used on the server as a templating engine. Uh, it's used on your uh, terminals for building charts. It, uh, there are component, React components that you can use for building, uh, for making uh, audio and uh, like creating MIDI players. So the, there are like a lot of uses for uh, React. Uh, one of the important things to note about React is that it's not a framework uh, like Ember or Angular, so it it just gives it just gives you the view layer, and you have to bring uh, like choose all the other components that you need uh, from the React ecosystem. So in case you need the uh, router, you'll uh, you'll use the React router or uh, some different version of it or some different router as per your needs. And uh, if you need state management system, you can use MobX or Redux. But uh, there's no uh, there's no like a, a set standard that uh, uh, other frameworks like Angular or Ember provide you. Uh, so moving on, the the major selling point for React is that it it, it lets you build uh, large applications that are composed of uh, smaller encapsulated components. So what I mean by this is that uh, here's a React component and it has all its styling in there. It has the markup in there. As you can see, the H3 tag, uh, the P tags, span tags, and it even has a UI logic there. So everything is encapsulated in a single component. This helps in like uh, unlike other frameworks where you have to uh, you have to move from to a controller to a model to a template to a uh, to a factory to a something something, and uh, that makes it uh, very difficult to refactor your code. It makes it difficult to test your code. And with React, you can just uh, bundle everything in a single file, or it can be split into multiple files. But the 
the main logic remains in one place and which makes it extremely simple to test so you can take your single component and you can plug it with your other components and you can compose a larger application so say for example you want to build uh, this ui as a react application so you can have a uh, you can have all of this as a section uh, session list component and this session list component could be composed of multiple session components and each of these session components can further be uh, made up of uh, multiple components based on your requirements like how how complex they are so you can like go uh, a level down whenever there is complexity uh, so before we move forward uh, we'll do a, a quick primer on react so here's a react component uh, it's it's a pure function an anonymous function nothing no magic here no no classes no nothing so this component uh, takes some uh, takes some data as props so i have destructured it in line so i don't need to write props dot title props dot speaker or prop, props dot experience and it returns a, a a ui ui component which is just a, b a bunch of markup and this markup is uh, uh, this this HTML like syntax is uh, what we call JSX. So this compiles down to React functions. Uh, so basically, you have your React component and which takes some data and uh, returns a UI. So if you want to uh, be fancy, you can say that your UI is a function of your application state. Uh, another advanced way to create React component would be uh, to. Uh, to grab the component class from your React module, and you can extend that class, and this gives you a bunch of uh, features. Like, for example, your component now can have its uh, can have its own state. So, with this state, you can uh, like uh, you can pass data uh, to the render object, or you can use it even to bind. Uh, you can even use it to bind uh, functions and methods. Uh, so this would save you time uh, f uh, instead of like, referencing the this keyword you can just do it in the constructor also uh, with it you get uh, you get life cycle hooks so say for example whenever a component is shown on the page uh, you can trigger a function whenever it's uh, before it's shown on the page you can trigger a function whenever it's unmounted you can uh, trigger a function and there there is a, there is a handful of handful more of these functions available to you also, uh, with the component uh, component based uh, uh, React components, uh, you can even add event handlers. So, for example, uh, you can add a click handler there. So, whenever you click on the uh, UI, you can like trigger a click action. And and lastly, you have the uh, the render method, which on every change renders the uh, the UI again instead of updating it uh, using the virtual DOM. So, we won't get into that because that's a lot of stuff. So uh, coming to MVC or oh, so coming to MVC, uh, the architecture we have been using in most of our frameworks, be it backend or frontend, uh, it's composed of three uh, three main uh, things: controller, views, and models. And uh, in MVC, the views and the models are tightly coupled, and this can be between multiple components. So all your components, uh, one of your if one of your components um, uh, view is uh, linked to a, compo a different components model, you'll have to change two different components, and uh, this can go on and on. And this is where Redux comes in. So, so say for example you have this kind of UI. It's a view. Uh, it's a video player page, and it has a uh, a delete button uh, to delete the current video. It has a video player. It has a comments related to the current video and it has a uh, list it's a, it has a number of uh, uh, number of videos in the current playlist so say for example i click uh, and let's consider all these things are different components so you have a video player you have a uh, comments section you have a, a list of uh, videos in the playlist and you have a component showing the number of videos in the playlist so consider you click on the delete button how many places do we need to update the component? Like all these things needs to be updated. And this is where Redux comes in. Uh, as per the docs, uh, Redux is a predictable state container for JavaScript applications. So what this basically means is uh, you have a single store that provides all the state to all your components. 
So that's your application state. Instead of each model having its own, each component having its own state, you have uh, all the state in one place, and you pass it down to your uh, root component, which trickles down to the subcomponents. And this is like uh, you, your uh, your state tree would look like this. It would be a hu uh, a large uh, JavaScript object uh, with a lot of data regarding related to your multiple components. And uh, the 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 three main principles of Redux are actions and action creators, uh, reducer, and the store. So to understand these things, uh, we'll we'll go through a walk through a a simple uh, counter application. So whenever you click on the, the plus button, you trigger the increment action. Whenever you press on the decrement button, you trigger the decrement action, and, and your current value will show up in the middle. So first, uh, we'll look at action and action creators. So to make any change to your uh, Redux application, you have to trigger some actions. So actions are basically simple. Action creator is ba simply a pure function that returns an ob action object, which needs to have a type. So it's a it's a simple object that has a type property, which can be a string, so that it's easy to deserialize. Next, uh, we have reducers. So reducer is a, again a pure function. It takes the current state, and it takes an action. So for example, here we are. Uh, taking the action and we are switch, uh, switching over it, uh, switching over the action type. So in case it's increment, we take the current state and we increment it. In case it's uh, decre the action type is decrement, we uh, reduce the state by one. And in case uh, the action type is something different, we return the current state. So this is the action. This is the also uh, important thing to note is that there are no mutations. So you always return a new state. So so the reducer is uh, takes some uh, takes some action and takes the initial state and it returns the new state next we have the store uh, so uh, to create a store in redux we we grab the create store uh, uh, the create store function from the redux module and to it we pass the reducer that we uh, created uh, like uh, the reducer we created right here and so we pass it the uh, reducer, and it uh, the store value uh, variable will now have uh, a bunch of methods. Like we can get the current state, and we can dispatch actions through it. So uh, with get state, we get the current state, and with dispatch function, we can uh, dispatch few actions like increment or decrement that we created previously. So now to use Redux with uh, React, we have a binding uh, a binding module. But uh, an important thing to note here is that Redux can be used with other uh, frameworks as well. Uh, Angular uses Redux uh, for managing state. So uh, even there is a module for Ember as well. So it's, it can be even used on backend. So it's not specific to uh, React and frontend only. So uh, to use uh, Redux with uh, uh, Rea your React component, you just wrap your uh, the parent component, which is app here, uh, with a provider component that React Redux provides, and you give it the store that we created earlier, and and that's it. Uh, you'll have uh, you have your parent component wrapped with a with the state of your application. So as you can see here. Uh, we have wrapped our router in a provider. So uh, in the previous slide, I wasn't using a router, but it was an app. So imagine it's it's an app. Instead of router, you would have an app here, and it would be wrapped with the provider component. So uh, whenever, uh, no, right now, you have your uh, component, um, the root component wrapped with the provider component, but in case you want to access the state in a child component that's like deeply nested so either you can like pass the data down via props or you can what you can do is you can use the connect function that can like uh, tap into the state and get the data from there so here we are importing the connect function from react uh, redux binding and we are passing it our uh, component 
which lets us uh, get the state specific to the sessions. Uh, uh, okay. So also, whenever we connect a component, uh, we connect a React. We connect a React component with the uh, with the store. We get the dispatch function as a props, through it which uh, we can call the action creator and uh, pass some state. So here is our uh, React component, and we are grabbing the dispatch from the props. And here we are using the dispatch function to call the uh, add session uh, add session method as, uh, on click on the on click event. So. React is based on, uh, as you can see, React is based on all the functional principles uh, like immutability, where uh, your store is uh, read only, and on the only way to change is is to uh, call the action creators. Uh, it's 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 based on composition, where uh, you pass it multiple pure functions that can be used for logging your current state, uh, for managing asynchronous data, or or other use cases. And uh, as we talked earlier, everything is a pure function, so uh, nothing too complex, no magic there, no observables. Uh, and a disclaimer would be that uh, to use, uh, you don't necessarily need to use Redux with your React applications. Uh, you, it only comes into play when your application is uh, is quite large and there are too many things to manage. So yeah, we'll take a look uh, how to use how to uh, use React with Drupal. Uh, to get started, we'll uh, use 8.2 version. So yeah, we'll start by creating a session content type with the following fields about speaker, description, experience, and speaker. Next, we'll uh, enable these modules, uh, which are in D8 core, uh, which allow which will allow us to expose data. After that, we'll create a view and set path as API slash sessions, uh, which will expose data when you'll go to the following URL, uh, uh, your site name slash API slash slash uh, sessions. You'll be able to see all the data from the session nodes here. So uh, that would be something like this. This is uh, how your data is going to be reflected reflected as a view. Views REST export. Uh, there are a couple of ways we can uh, you know, connect React to Drupal. Uh, let's uh, talk about uh, progressive decoupling. There, we'll have a, a, in progressive decoupling, we'll have a React component in our Drupal system, and uh, this can be inside nodes, uh, blocks, pages, or any other entities. So inside your theme, uh, we have a custom theme con. And uh, we'll add React components, components uh, folder here, and we'll have a trans file uh, file in our JS folder as sessionlist.js, and we can include these uh, trans file files into our con.libraries.yaml file. Next, this is our uh, con.libraries.yaml file. Here we have an. Uh, a session component and it has a dependency on React Depths, which is a bundle of React and uh, React DOM and other libraries which are required. Uh, this is a con lab. Okay, just a moment. So, in our current uh, current uh, component uh, component file, we'll we'll get data from Drupal by fetching at this URL con.dd slash api dot slash sessions. It'll, uh, when uh, when component will mount, we'll fetch that data from Drupal and update the component state. When we'll get the data from the above request, we'll map through it and pass it to the session component props here as a session key index uh, session. So yeah, we'll pass that data as a restructured session props here. And this uh, session list component will actually render our UI. We'll create a custom uh, block in Drupal uh, where all the components will mount. And for that, we'll create a simple uh, normal uh, div and uh, place it in a content region. 
this is a session uh, listing of session node listing which you will be able to see when we uh, add it to a uh, specific region so inside modules uh, so yeah, okay so another way to uh, uh, progressively decouple uh, react applications with drupal would be to uh, create a module so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll we'll create a module called sessions list and it will again have a components folder where all our react components will be and we can create a template file where these components will mount so next we'll have a routing uh, the routing.yml file so it it would be a page and so whenever you go to this page you will you'll see the component and in our controller we'll uh, we'll get our initial state of the component so we'll look into it so here's our routing file so whenever i go to this url i call this uh, controllers uh, is this class's index function and the page will have the session page title so here's my controller uh, it's called whenever i go to the slash sessions page and here i'm using guzzle to get some data get the view data and uh, if it's if the request is all right i i pass it to the template so why we are doing this is because uh, instead of like whenever our component mounts we are sending off an ajax request so instead of doing that we are passing the initial data directly to our template so uh, whenever the component is mounted it just gets the data from our template uh, and like here you can see we have uh, created the template here we have a id where the component is uh, mounted and we have a script tag where we are passing the initial state so the react component will take the initial state from here so uh, just a second so instead of uh, instead of like uh, sending out a ajax request it will just get the data from the dom and uh, it will boot up a lot faster compared to sending a ajax request another way would be to attach uh, the data to drupal settings variable instead of like passing it to the template uh, so here i have used the i have attached it to the drupal settings as a session variable and so here's uh, here's my component so whenever i mount i first check if uh, the component if the component uh, if the global window global window object has an initial state variable and if it does i get the data from there if not i'll i'll just fetch some data from the server and update my component so uh, this is how the page would look like if i go to the slash sessions page i'll 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 be like i'll i'll grab some data from the drupal settings variable and i'll render my component so next up we have uh, fully decoupled drupal so this is where you would have two different servers running two different technologies like one would be running your drupal uh, drupal website and uh, another would be running node.js and uh, to like uh, to understand how you can go about this uh, uh, we'll use json api and so yeah when building fully decoupled drupal website uh, we'll prefer using json api or uh, rest services that are bundled in uh, drupal 8 core and you can go ahead and see some of the best features uh, it comes up with in youtube uh, link on the drupal uh, json API module uh, on Drupal.org. I'll try to explain some of them here. Uh, so yeah, it follows uh, the specification. Uh, so in case you want to move away from Drupal backend and you want to, you know, uh, convert uh, go to some other backend, it can be, uh, you know, your front end will not be affected. Your front end work will not be affected. So. Uh, Again, so it, it gives us a cleaner output. I have tried to assemble it here. The output looks like this. This is the REST uh, view export, even with the cardinality one and uh, you know one value as an attribute in an attribute. It gives you know it is appearing as a object, whereas JSON API provides you uh, provides us with a cleaner output. If we have data and it can you know. Uh, gather all the attributes in a one single rather than uh, uh, attaching it as an object. It has a sparse field. It has a 
uh, you know you can go ahead and uh, select particular fields uh, which you want to show on your page for example for example here we have uh, we have a bundle node session fields uh, up there and uh, for example i just need title and field experience and field speakers uh, these three these three fields on my uh, data to be exposed so i can actually go ahead and mention there mention uh, these three fields over there and uh, I, i'll uh, grab the uh, the data from these three three fields only title field experience and field speakers i'm using postman as an uh, for testing my apis over here so uh, yeah so the limited fields would be there so you can go ahead and uh, do drush tl uh, json api minus y and uh, this is your this is your namespace of uh, api and this will be your entity type the session uh, this is your session is your bundle and this is your format uh, params so this all these settings uh, you can find if you are using rest uh which is bundled with core you can go ahead and uh, see these uh, settings into res.settings.yaml file and uh, uh, modify it accordingly so uh, since we are uh, getting data from other server uh, we'll get course error uh, for that uh, you will need to go ahead and you know uh, enable course module otherwise you can also go into uh, your htaccess file and uh, add this uh, snippet uh, to Uh, ignore that error. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, we have like uh, created a small demo application that we'll take a look uh, a bit later. Uh, so uh, here's the application where you can add. Uh, you can like uh, you, we are using Drupal as a backend for uh, providing the data where we add sessions and we can like perform all the CRUD operations. so we'll just look at few uh, patterns that we that are like common in such applications uh for example to fetch sessions uh you hit the following url so uh when you go to api/node/sessions uh, you get a list of all the session nodes and uh here we are dispatching two functions uh one before getting the sessions and once one uh one action when we get the data from the following fetch request so this is for getting the entity collection and if you want to get a single entity you pass it the specific id of that entity and you'll get the data but uh, a thing to note here is that this isn't the nid but a specific id that uh, rest uh, sorry the json api provides next uh, if you want to perform a delete action uh, you have to add some authentication so here i'm using i have hard coded uh, basic auth data so it's it's base 64 encoded admin user and admin password so i just hit the the following url with the method of delete and the node gets deleted and post that i can like switch urls and all so that's up to me and instead of basic authentication i can even use a uh, simple or2 uh, there's a module simple or2 which is a bit uh, better uh, compared to basic oauth and when adding new sessions uh, here's the uh, if you if you can see the post variable here's the shape of the data that you have to post so you need to have a type uh, of the no, uh, type of the uh, the bundle the, uh, the content type there and as attributes you'll have all the variables like the title the speaker the experience required so that would be a json object there and again to post some data you need basic authentication or any other kind of authentication so this is the data we'll post and this is the url we'll post to uh, the same url we get the collection of data from and uh, to perform a patch request it's it's uh, almost similar to the post request but the only difference is here is that you have to provide the nid uh, of the node that you want to update not the id but the nid here so which can be a bit confusing and you you post you you send a patch request to the uh, to the url where you want to update it uh, another important thing uh, when it comes to react application is that you would want to switch pages so for that you can use a react router so here's a simple react router component uh, which loads different uh, components on different pages so i have imported a, a bunch of components and whenever i go to say for example session slash new i will load the 
new session component and in case I want to add authentication to it so in, I, I don't want anyone to go to the new sessions page unless they are authenticated so I can wrap it in a container component uh, that uh, requires authentication from my store and this is how I would be sending out uh, all these actions like for example to get action to to get sessions uh, to receive sessions for adding and updating sessions so this is the basic action object structure and uh, this would be the reducer that like uh, checks the action type and changes the state and returns a new state instead of updating the existing one so I'll, I'll do a quick demo and Here's my Drupal app. So as you can see, there's some content in there. So I have three nodes there. Uh, these are session content type. And I can see them here as well on the se uh, slash sessions page. and. Um, if I go to any of these pages, I can uh, I can look at the content. It's coming from uh, Drupal. I can delete it and I can edit it. So in case I uh, so this is the React frontend session. So it's showing up here. In case I send a delete request, it gets deleted from my Drupal backend as well. So nothing fancy here. Okay, yeah, should be deleted here as well. Okay, it's gone now. And uh, in case I want to update a session, I can double click and I can update this session and it would be reflected on my Drupal background. So, quite simple, nothing too difficult. I can even create new sessions. So. Something broke, I guess. Uh, it it added it here, so I'm not sure. Like I was making some changes before the presentation, so I'll need to take a look. Uh, so coming back to the presentation. So that was the demo, and uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for coming. Are there any questions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll post it tonight. Okay. Anything else? Uh, yeah, actually, I have uh, three yeah. questions. Sure. Uh, so I maintain JavaScript for Drupal core, and uh, we're talking about using more modern JavaScript right. for development, at least. Um, so in your project, do you use only ES6? Uh, like uh, the next version of JavaScript uh, because of React? Or do you only use that or do you also use, you know, like older JavaScript? Uh, it's like ES6 is right now, ES 2015 is the current standard right now, so yeah. it, I usually use it for most of my projects. All right, so for I, didn't, I wasn't at the beginning of the session, but do you have uh, always a compiling step? Uh, when writing React? Uh, well, uh, React gives you, there's a package called create React apps. Yeah. So you don't need to configure Webpack. 
and uh, it it it's bundled with it. But uh, I I would prefer Webpack okay. over the other other module bundlers. Um, and what about the browser support for your website or apps usually? Uh, what do you target? These uh, Webpack would compile down to ES5, so I think it should work fine for uh, browsers up to at least IE8. All right. Um, and now, if there were tools to help ES6 development in Drupal core, would that help, or would that be a problem with your current setup? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I got the question. Um, so let's say Drupal core allows you to write ES6, right. and we have a whole like Webpack configuration mm -hmm. already right. set up. Mm -hmm. So would that get in the way of developing with React and some other tools? Or would that help to for you to reuse what Core does to compile your React JavaScript into regular JavaScript? I think that should be fine. That shouldn't be an issue. Uh. Right, so I guess the question is, can React uh, work with different compilers? Yeah, it can or work. You, like you can use Browserify or uh, other compilers as well. OK. Uh, and last one. So if there was one tool in core, which one would you which prefer, I uh, guess? Do you mean the framework? No, I mean the, well, the compiling okay. part uh, of it. Like these, keep, these things keep on moving quite fast. Or like oh, yeah, I know. But, but for like right now, I would, choose, I would choose Webpack. <laughs> OK. Yeah. And any reason? Or? Uh, well, it's like it has features like uh, chunking coding. So like you can break your uh, application into multiple files based on multiple parameters. Like for example, if you're using React router, you can uh, break it based on your routes. Mm -hmm. So okay. whenever you go to a particular route, only then a file loads. So it saves you a lot of bytes there. Okay. And it works with like uh, everything, almost everything, like JSON files, markdown files, images, and all, all the other stuff. All right. Thank you. Sure. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, please rate our session. And thank you.